Hello, Scale here. I'm, um, I've popped out <laughs> into my shed to show you everything uh, I've got that's going on. I've been very busy this week. Um, I've did, you know, my um, my crocheted squares, um, and I said to you I, I wasn't quite sure about. There it is. I wasn't quite sure about connecting it with these three things. Well, I've made it bigger. Can you see? I've gone all round the edge with um, rows of double crochets. So hopefully I'll be able to attach them side to side, you know, like, like that, by attaching the two rows of double crochet. I didn't want it to be stringy in between, you know. I want it to have a bit of structure rather than just draping lace on me. Anyway, I've been doing loads of those. I've worked out how big I'm going to be doing it and how many squares I need. And I've had to buy another six balls of wool. So that's 16 altogether. 1,600 grams. Hopefully that will be enough. If it's not, it will just have to be shorter than I want it, won't it? But um, yeah, I've done about 60 of them now. Anyway. Um... I was rooting around for doing things with my grandson and I found all this wool I'd forgotten I had. Some blue, which is very like that blue, isn't it? But this is four ply and this is double knitting. And some more wool. And some more wool, which I bought, of course, for one of my grandsons, all these blues. And this is really heavy. Each ball is 200 grams and that's cotton recycled cotton actually so I was going to put it on top of my cupboard up here but um, it's too heavy for me stick I'll have to call my husband in which won't be anytime soon because he likes to stay away and I also found this wool it was up on the top this wool so I'm going to start um, a jumper or a cardigan for my youngest grandson who lives far away but she's not measured him yet and uh, she's not decided she wants a jumper or a cardigan but hopefully it'll come out slightly striped like um, my granddaughters did because everybody thinks that that's lovely so it's a lovely day i've got my door open so you, you might be able to hear the twittering of the birds um last weekend with my grandson we made crowns for the coronation which is tomorrow um, I've not made mine yet, so I better get on with it. My husband says I can make one for him if I want, but he doesn't think he's going to wear it. Just while we watch it on the TV, you know, we're not going off to London or anything. But um, yeah, my grandson was really pleased with him. He said he was taking it to school to show everybody. So um, yeah, I spent oh, hours and hours cutting out circles and diamond shapes and squares and oblongs and things for sticking on out of... Um, foam some of it was holographic and um, shiny paper and glittery paper so I have a whole selection of leftovers to use after he completely covered his crown with every shape known to man and I've found some glue as well we were a bit um, struggling on where has granny put the glue so I'm going to make myself one of those today and last night I finished my bunting now I have got bunting which is down there somewhere, um, that I made for, oh, I think it was Harry's wedding, which is very nice. That's kind of flowery. It's kind of um, Union Jacks, but the background is flowery, different flowers. It's very nice. And on the back of that, I have um, appliqued happy birthday letters that spell out happy birthday. So you can hang it up for a, a royal event or you can hang it up for someone's birthday. Anyway, I've done a special one for... Charles, I bought the panel off um, Sewing Street and um, and I put it together last night. So everything is backed with purple because it's, you know, royal. And we have Union Jacks and um, these decorative ones. There's three different decorative ones. They're a plain, a stripy and a wide stripe. And I've embroidered around the motif this is the official motif and i've embroidered in purple chain stitch and golden whip stitch so that's just straight stitch whipped just to make it a bit royal of course i never use it again will i i don't think there's going to be another coronation especially of king charles but you know we're having um, i've ordered everything we're having afternoon tea 
um, starting in the morning <laughs> while we watch it. We're having, um, I bought um, to make sandwiches in, oh, there's a nice little bird out there. Oh, never seen a bird on the pear tree before. Um, we're having little sandwiches on the bottom of the afternoon tea. And um, I've got roast beef and roast turkey and egg mayonnaise and roast ham and coleslaw and baby potato salad and um, some quiches, salmon and broccoli and Lorraine, quiche Lorraine, um, for the savoury food. And then we've got sultana scones and plain scones to have with our clotted cream and jam and strawberries. And then I've got... Um, chocolate fudge cake and mini chocolate eclairs and um, lemon cheesecake for the sweet layer so um, we're going to be I've also bought three bottles of wine all sparkling all well one's white and two are rosé um, and I've yet to get the books fizz and with the bread I bought he's already started eating it so he'll have to go out and get some more bread so we're having a real celebration tomorrow lasting a few hours I was sat in front of the telly with our crowns on um, and our bunting up so um, I don't know how long this is I just spent hours yesterday well I've spent all week embroidering and sewing them together I've done it all by hand in front of the TV I love purple but I had to put purple on it didn't I being as it was uh, you know a coronation you don't have many of them going on do you is that not sewn in right let's um, put some clips on there it's a good job i looked do some unpicking and some re-sewing in a bit um yeah so i've done that so that's all going well ready for tomorrow i'm all ready just got to go to bed early to get up early so in the meantime lots of things have been delivered um I knew I had one over here. Now this, I've been, I've been trying to do this for a long time um, because in the summer when the grandchildren come around, they like to play in the garden and we have all sorts of things, you know, quoits where you, you throw it on the stick and um, balls that you throw at target things. We've got football goals, little children football goals and um, hockey, all sorts of, uh, you know, putting with a stick kind of thing. Um, I wanted to make some um, bean bags, kind of bean bags that you can play with, you know, but I want them to have two sets of the same thing so we can play the matching game. And I couldn't find, I couldn't find anything that was suitable in my eyes. I did buy one set, um, but there was nothing that matched really. That was a bad buy. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I'll find something. Um, anyway, I found this and I bought two. So this is going to be the matching game. So I've bought two, so I've got a duplicate. Yeah. So I'm going to make them into kind of um, bean bags with plain on the back. And then you spread them on the floor and um, turn them over and you think, oh, that's a ladybird. Where did I see a ladybird? Over there. Nope, it's not there. And you try and remember. It's very good for children for you know, extend, expanding their memory. I also bought something horrible. My husband and I got it out of the bag last night and we both went, hmm. Well, yeah. It's not really what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting quite so much orange. This, this is more, more of my thing. And that's very like it, isn't it? Eh? Kind of. Anyway, it's a bit orange for me, but I dare say it might make into a, a nice dress. That'll be one of the first dresses I'm making because the ones that I'm not too keen on are the ones I will experiment with, you know, like toile, if that's how you pronounce it. So that's come. And um, from our de-stashing group, I bought this, which is um, Dan Diani by Robin Pickens. Now, this is quite old. I don't know what year it was made. And, uh, you know, I bought it the other day. And um, and last night I saw online that she was bringing out an updated version of it with colours that will go. So I'll be able to buy some yardage. Now, I'm not too keen on the black, but being as I've got lots of black um, 
from her collections. There's usually, I don't know, seven or eight in each collection that has grey or black in it. And I'm thinking I'll put them aside for, you know, a dark quilt. Um, and I'm beginning to think, no, include it. You know, I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. I don't really like black in the bedroom. Not that I've ever had it. But, you know, it just doesn't feel right to me. So there's a lot, isn't there, of all these. I might give them to my friend. She likes um, straight lines and different colours to me. I like floral. I like that. That's gorgeous, isn't it? I like that. I might buy that in yardage. So um, this is from my D-stash group. Um, because, you know, now that it's not um, fabric-free February, I'm on there all the time, several times a day. Because, you know, if you don't go on it, you miss. If there's a, a fantastic deal or somebody's selling something you really love and you're not looking all the time, you get on there and somebody else has bought it, which is very disheartening. Anyway, it's, it's all dandelions, you see. It's lovely. I love that. I also bought this set. This set of five fat quarters. So... I don't know who these are by, but they're lovely. I love them. I especially like this one. Of course, it's floral. You know what I like. I like all of those. <coughs> I've also spent quite a bit of time this past couple of weeks feeling ill. I don't know what's the matter with me. Well, I'm, I know it's probably my bilirubin levels. Maybe that should go up there. Can you see there's yellow in that one? Oh dear me. And there's yellow in that one as well. Yeah. Anyway, they're lovely. I love them. I'm really pleased I bought them because I don't know what I'm going to do with them as usual. But I love them. And then you see, I have a collection like this and uh, I'll root in all my fabrics and think, oh, that'll go with it, that'll go with it. And I, I end up with a, a much bigger collection. A bit like this one. That I got from, um, uh, uh, is it called Fabric Treasures for the UK? Something like that with Sheila. So she got, she, um, this is, this is a set I did want when the catalogues came out. I wanted this and um, she wasn't ordering it and I thought, well, I'll get it from somewhere else when it comes out. But you know, other places, they don't sell them at the prices that Sheila does. And I'm not on their sites all the time, so sometimes you go uh, wanting to buy something, it's already sold out. Anyway, here I have 22, I think, 22 fat quarters. I love this one, this plain one here, it's got little butterflies all over it. That's lovely, isn't it? And here we have flowers. I've sorted them all into colour groups. This is, they were all mixed up. They do all go, you know. But uh, I'll show you just the purple ones for now, because I can't hold 22 in my hand all at once, can I? Oh, I'm a bit ham-fisted, aren't I? Anyway, then we go to the pinks. These are called Jolie. And these, the big prints, are gorgeous. Let me show you. Look at that, isn't that lovely? It's lovely isn't it it's just gorgeous anyway um these are kind of peaches so i treated myself to these for my birthday it was my birthday week and i thought yep and then we go on to greens you see this one is um it's got more colors in it but it's the same pattern as the one i just unfolded i'm just adding to the mess on my table <laughs> it's lovely isn't it I might see if I can get some yardage of that because I do like a border. And then we have another multicoloured one. Let's at least see what this is like. They are gorgeous. These are just my kind of thing. I love them. Colourful and flowery. Or floral. My daughter keeps telling me it's floral, mum. The proper word. So there's, there's that, you see. And here's the green. Let's see how it all goes. I love green as well. And then it goes into the blues. There's the green. 
in with the blues blue flowers blue and yellow more blue and a big floral blue and a butterfly blue aren't they gorgeous i mean they're in a big mixed up pile now <laughs> oh dear my desk is looking super messy and i've got something else as well that i'm really excited about let me just kind of get these in an order that pleases me so that i don't go grumpy i just put them in a neat pile and then i stick it on the top of another pile i'm a pile creator oh hang on here's the pinks there's a lot of pieces i'm going to be able to make i mean what's 22 divided by four that's five meters isn't it four fives of 20 make a big quilt for that anyway i think i told you last week that i'd ordered these that I was waiting for the chickadee, um, uh, the chickadee um, layer cake to come, which is a ten-inch square, and um, and Sheila at Fabric Treasures for the UK had um, she'd had trouble getting the ten-inch squares, and she got these five-inch squares. So I've got four packs of these five-inch squares. Don't know why I'm showing you all four, like you don't believe me or something. But that um, um, I saw today on um, Missouri Star Quilt Company, I think it is. They did a, a very nice, um, a very nice pattern for using five-inch squares. And I'm thinking oh, maybe I can do that. You know, just get something done quick and lovely because the prints in here are lovely. They're all kind of watercolory, aren't they? Like, kind of a bit painterly, yeah? Ooh, lovely. Aren't they lovely? You know, these kind of things. I'm, I'm very inclined to want to do a nine patch or something. But I think I'll do this other thing. I've also been looking at um, patterns for crowns. So I can do... Oh, I've got that one. I've got a yard of that. Um, I've got to do a quilt for King Charles's coronation. I haven't got to. But uh, I was telling my husband yesterday, the one I'm doing for the Queen, um, I've ordered a tea towel to put on the back of it. It's all, all different uh, fabric Union Jacks or Union Flags. I've shown you, I've made four up to now. <laughs> and I bought a pattern to see if that makes it easier, but I've not had a chance to get around to it. Um, so I bought a tea towel that I'm going to stitch on the back about the Queen's 70 years because you know that's what the quilt was made for um, and I'm thinking maybe I should make one for the coronation I don't particularly want a picture of um, King Charles on my bed or the Queen actually but they're on the back you know you never see the back but I was looking at um, at tea towels yesterday online for putting on the back of, of the King Charles quilt I might make and you know it's cheaper to buy a flag I think I might buy a flag and so that on the back, or, you know, have it as my backing fabric. It's a lot cheaper. It's probably polyester. I'll have to keep looking. I've not quite decided yet whether or not I'm going to make something. But, um, you know, in a hundred years, it'll, um, it'll be memorabilia, won't it? And some member of my family, hopefully, will have it and take it to the Antiques Road Show. <laughs> not that it'll be worth anything. But anyway... Um, yeah, so the pattern I've found is called King's Crown and it looks very simple. So I think I'm going to do that for Charles's with, um, you know, lots of um, gold and yellow crowns and other, other bits of it purple and white. Just um, we'll have to see anyway. That's what I'm thinking of doing anyway. So I think that's everything. I think that's everything that has arrived that's new. It's very exciting. I've got lots to do. Um, I've put together my um, other quilted quarter of the quilt, so I've got that to do. Um, I've still got to do this um, this top that um, uh, a lady in my quilt group needed help doing, so I'm going to sew that together at some point, as well as crochet, as well as make um, you know a nice 
how long have I been on? Nearly 20 minutes. A nice um, cardigan or jumper for my grandson. Oh, I bought some buttons. Um, to get free postage, I needed to make up some money, so I bought some buttons. I thought they were lovely. I don't know if they're suitable for little boys, but I just love those. So I bought those. And there's some little girl ones. I buy them without um, holes in, because my daughter, who's scared of buttons, or has a fear of buttons, a phobia, she thinks it's the buttons, the, the holes in the button that, that make her feel awful. And I got some, oh, one's already come off, oh, it's there. Um, I got some self-covering ones, so I thought, you know, maybe I could put some fabric buttons on. Um, I'll have to put that in a plastic bag so I don't lose it. On one of the cardigans or something. And of course I've got dresses to make for my granddaughter. I've got so much to do. I'm going to have to write a list because, you know, I lie in bed in the morning thinking, oh, I've got so much to do. And my heart starts going pitter-patter, pitter-patter. I, honestly, I get wound up over nothing. I have been feeling really poorly these last few weeks. And I've still got another week or so, uh, 17th, to have a phone call about my blood test results with the doctor. Um, and today's the 5th, so that's 12 more days before I can even talk about it. They leave you feeling ill for a long time. You only get to see the doctor if it's bad. If it's really bad, yeah, you're told to go to the hospital. But if it's medium bad, you might get to see the doctor. If, if the doctor doesn't think it's that bad, they arrange for you to have a phone call in a month. So in the meantime, you know, people are getting really ill and dying. We, that's what all the excess deaths are about, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Um, anyway, beside the point, isn't it? That's not what I'm here to talk about. So, um, yeah, I'll be doing quilting tonight. Have a bit of time off uh, crocheting because I've got a very sore shoulder. This shoulder has really started hurting. So I'm going to, um, you know every week or so not do something and see if it stops hurting so that I can kind of narrow down if it's um, something I'm doing like crocheting or sewing or whatever but what worries me is um, about 10 years ago I had um, calcified tender in my other uh, tendon in my other shoulder and I'm wondering if this is a calcified tendon as well I shouldn't really worry because you know they treated it they needled it I had to go into the ultrasound department and they stuck it under an ultrasound thing. It wasn't touching it. I don't know how it worked. I was just lay there. And then they stuck all the injections in and then they got a big needle and pounded it. It's called needling and they, they bash it up with a big needle in your skin, in your, you know, in your shoulder um, while they see what they're doing on ultrasound. Um, and then I, I couldn't use my shoulder for I think it was two days and it was all strapped up and it was really hard to butter toast you know with one hand you have to kind of wedge it against something and hope it doesn't fall on the floor or curl up and you think oh I'll just have a piece of toast you can't get the flipping butter on or the jam or whatever or you can't butter bread there's a lot of things you can't do with one hand one-handed people are really skilled maybe I should weigh it down you know, have handy a big tin or something. Anyway, there's no saying that they're going to do that. But when they did it, yeah, um, painkillers lasted for the rest of the day. And then um, I did, I felt like I'd been injured, you know, had an accident. But then after a few days, it was fine. I went back to work. And when I went for my checkup, <laughs> I said to them, can I have some more of the, um, you know, the steroid injections they give you? Because, oh, it made it made my whole body feel so much better. All the aches and pains went and they said, no, you can only have two a year or something. Not good for you, really. So I had to put up with it all when it all wore off. But I had a, they had another look at my shoulder and they said that the the calcified tendon was much worse, but it wasn't it wasn't pushing on the uh, on the nerve anymore. So it doesn't hurt me. So, you know, I'm, I'm a bit worried I might be calcifying you know, and turning into a pillar of calcium. I don't know what calcium is. It's not salt, is it? 
Yeah, I was just um, thinking of the, the the woman in the Bible that turned into a pillar of salt. I don't know. I'd be like a pillar of tooth or something. Would I? <laughs> maybe, maybe bone. I don't know. Anyway, it still works, my shoulder, and it doesn't hurt me, so I shouldn't worry really. But I don't, I don't really want um, this shoulder to be doing it, and I don't know what's the matter with it. So yeah, I think I'll have a week free of crochet this week and do my quilting, and we'll see how that progresses. And um, the week after that, I'll try something else. Anyway, I'll um, I'll try and post some pictures of me having my celebratory coronation day with my crown on. I've got a lot of diamonds, although I've got a lot less than I did have because my, my grandson was peeling them off in strips. He must have had 28,000 diamonds on his, his crown. <laughs> I made his sisters, so um, that's very pinky, but it didn't have 28,000. It probably had 200 something like that so uh, anyway um i'm prepared for tomorrow at least and um being as we have a bank holiday then on the monday i think i might do some tidying up you know in here um it is getting a bit kind of uh, extremely messy shall we say and i'm going to write a list as well of all the things i've got to do and then i'll put that i'll prioritize them I used to do that at work, write all down all my jobs and then I'd cut the page up um, so that I had a job on each piece of paper and I'd rearrange them in priority order. Sometimes easiest order. I haven't really got any priorities. Got no birth well I have got I've got my little daughter granddaughter's birthday coming up in September. So I better make her doll before then. And at least one dress. Yeah, better make, 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 oh, I've got a lot to do. Anyway, um, I'll leave you now and uh, I hope this leaves you well and I'll come back and chat away to myself and you if you listen in a couple of weeks, maybe less. Bye-bye. <laughs>